In the last video, we derived this expression, um, taking the Laplace transform, when we multiply a function by the unit step function, and we derived this expression. Let's just use this now to solve some straightforward problems, really. Suppose we have the Laplace transform of, say, u of t minus 2 times t minus 2 cubed. And we want to know what is the Laplace transform, so that will equal. Now, this part of the formula here corresponds to this part of the formula. So, minus c, minus c, c is this, so we're going to have e to the minus 2s, and then for this part of the formula that corresponds to this, it's not the Laplace transform of f of t minus c, but just simply the Laplace transform of f of t. So here we want the Laplace transform of t cubed. And we know that is going to be equal to 3 factorial divided by s to the fourth. And that's our answer. So that was pretty straightforward. And as you can see, with the other examples, using this equation is not difficult at all. But let's just take a few more practice problems. Suppose we have the Laplace transform of u t minus eleven thirds, say times e to the t minus eleven thirds. So that will equal again from this part of the expression, that's going to give e to the minus 11 thirds times s. And for this part of the problem, we want then for the plus, for this part of the problem, we want the Laplace transform of not of e to the t minus 11 thirds, it's not the Laplace transform of f of t minus c, but just f of t. So we want the Laplace transform of e to the t. And from all the other videos, from our past videos here, um, you should recognize, hopefully, immediately, that this is equal to 1 over s minus 1. If it was e to the minus t, then it would be s plus 1. So our answer then is this divided by s minus 1. Again, pretty straightforward. Let's just consider a couple more examples here. Suppose we have the Laplace transform for this expression, u of t minus 1, and say multiplied by the sine of 3 times t minus 1. And this will equal from this part of the expression, that corresponds to this. So 
minus c minus 1, that will be, now here, we will just have then e to the minus s. c is just 1, but now what about here? Then we want to take the Laplace transform of not the sine of 3 times t minus 1, we want to take the Laplace transform of the sine of 3t. That's what our formula tells us. We don't take the Laplace transform of f of t minus c, it's just the Laplace transform of f of t. And remember now the Laplace transform for the sine of kt that is k divided by s squared plus k squared for our example k equals 3 so we're going to have 3 over s squared plus 9 so multiplying through There's our solution. So again, um, very straightforward examples. Let's just take one more, and then we're going to switch gears after that and consider inverse Laplace transforms for this type of situation. But let's take one more example. Suppose we have the Laplace transform Here's our step function. And suppose it's multiplied by, let's do it this time for the cosine. So from this part of the expression, that corresponds to this. So that's going to be e to the minus pi over 6 times s. And then we have to determine the Laplace transform, not of the cosine of t minus pi over 6, but just the Laplace transform of the cosine of. Let's make it more interesting. Let's take, say, 2 times this. So we have the cosine of 2 times t minus pi over 6. So we want to take the Laplace transform of the cosine of 2t. And again, that's what our formula tells us. We don't take the Laplace transform of f of t minus c. It's just the Laplace transform of f of t. So that's the Laplace transform of 2t. Remember. The Laplace transform now of the cosine of k times t. We derived this, of course, in our previous videos, and that was equal to s divided by s squared plus k squared. In our example here, k equals 2, k squared is going to be 4, so Multiplying this by the Laplace transform of this, that's going to be s divided by s squared plus 4. So this is the Laplace transform of that expression. And again, uh, very straightforward examples, but we just want to get a feel then as to how this expression works out for us. And again, um, it's not only uh, easy, but as you'll see in the future videos, it's very convenient. Now, let's just consider this for a moment. The Laplace transform of f of t, as you know from our previous videos that we've done in this series on the Laplace transform, that's just some function f of s. So we can put this in place of this.
Now, let's take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of this equation. So, the inverse Laplace transform then we have to take the inverse Laplace transform of this side of the equation, and of course the inverse of a Laplace transform of f of t is just the function f of t. So if we take the inverse Laplace transform of this expression, it's just going to give us this expression u of t minus c times f of t minus c. Taking the inverse Laplace transform of the Laplace transform just gives us this original function back again. So here we have this formula. And to get a feel how this works, we'll, we'll do several examples with that. But let's save that for the next video then. Uh, let's finish this video off. So again, this is a pretty convenient formula to use. Now let's get a feel as to how this formula works. We'll do that in the next video. Um, a reminder that the playlist for all the videos is featured at the website at digital-university.org.